I feel like I'm so involved in this world of mental health now that sometimes I forget how challenging it can be, you know, for somebody. So to hear kind of that story of you going back and being like, I didn't want to go and it was hard. And, you know, I needed somebody's support to be able to go there with me is a really good reminder that not everybody is on the same page or, you know, on the same level and that there are people who, um, you know, are just different points on their journey. And I think, you know, because I've become so comfortable talking about mental health and like, you know, my experience in going to therapy and like, I mean, I guess it actually wasn't that easy because it was just, oh man, probably a few weeks ago that I first opened up about like being medicated because for me, that was kind of taboo still. Mm. Um, and so that for me was like really, really tough. And I'm like, do I want to share about this open? And I'm glad that I did, but that was really hard. Um, but yeah, I just, I just appreciate you sharing your story with me and and hearing this from somebody else, it makes me that much more excited to kind of get going in my career in this mental health field to realize that the impact um, that it can have on other people and, you know, helping them to feel better in their lives, I guess. Well, yeah, what you're doing is so important because you're targeting kids who, you know, they might not have a role model and they might, you know, think that I'm the only one going through it and I'm just not worthy of living if I think that way. So it's important to have role models like you, you know, empower them. Now, do you ever go and speak to schools, um, like to young men um, about your experience and your journey ever? I've got my first one um, coming up late February. Good so luck. I've... That's super exciting. Sure. Will it be virtual or is this in person? Uh, virtual. It's virtual, Okay. Yeah, which kind of sucks. But like, it yeah, is... as are most things right now. Yeah, so that'll be my first one. I haven't really talked to places. I don't know. I I would love to. I I, I think I was waiting on like being in person, but you know what I mean? Sure. Because I, I, I feed off a room's energy. Like interviewing yeah. people through Zoom, it's fine. But like, I'd rather be in person. You know what I mean? Because I feed off that energy. I get it. Yeah. But look, I mean, I'm in the Cleveland area, you're in Canada, it would have been a lot harder to do, mm -hmm. you know, so there are definite perks of, you know, being virtual and being able to connect with people from, you know, really all around the world. I, I did a podcast, I don't know when it was maybe a, a couple months back or something with this woman in Ghana. So that was really cool. That's cool. Um, because it is, it's like, you know, also culturally, the experiences are different. And the way that people look at mental health in different countries is different. So like, I enjoy hearing and I would say, I don't know, I, I, don't, I can't say knowledgeably, but I would say that Canada and the US are somewhat similar in kind of where we're at with speaking about mental health. And I don't know, do you know anything about that? <laughs> uh, I don't, but I would assume so. Sure. But in other countries, though, it can be very, very different. Mm -hmm. Um. And so I would love to, you know, speak to more people from different places to hear from them and their experiences. Cause I just think that's so neat. I know it's all different. I, I was talking to someone who has like a background in like Southern Asian communities about mental health and like where they are in like recognizing it. It's so interesting. Cause it's like, it's not polar opposite, but it's like different. Sure. It's just interesting yep. to see the different, uh, mm -hmm ways people are talking about it yeah absolutely yeah also wait where did it go i lose it every time i want to show it <laughs> oh yeah there you go <laughs> this is my medication uh bottle i keep it with me to remind myself that uh it's okay that you're medicated because i was yeah. I, I also hated admitting that and i made a video oh. about it well, I made a I made a video about it, and like when it, before I posted, I was like, "I'm not gonna do this. This is stupid." But like, to your point, like it's important to tell people. Yeah, and I think for me, it definitely helped me because I think there were still some biases that I had about it before I went on it. Um, like I remember having the conversation with my therapist, being like, "Yeah, I don't want to go on medication. I'm not gonna do that," and her just being like. I just want you to know that, you know, it's an option. If, if all those fails, you still have another option. And I think it's definitely helped me to realize that it's okay. And it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal really. And, 
you know, my dosage isn't even high, but just like a little bit to help balance, you know, the chemicals in my body it really has made a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and maybe one day I'll be able to go off. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Right now is not the time though. I mean, I'm going through a lot of really big changes, you know, writing a book, finishing up grad school, you know, looking for a job once I graduate, you know, so, so now is not the time, but maybe eventually. Um, but the thing that my doctor had said, and I actually have a friend who said that their doctor said the same thing, which I thought was a really great kind of example of like why it's important and um, helped me to feel better about it was they were like, you're the best type of person to work with. You're already doing all the other things. You know, you're, you're eating pretty healthy. You're exercising, you know, fairly regularly. You know, you're, you've tried everything that you can. And unfortunately, that's still not enough. And so, you know, if somebody has something like diabetes, you don't all of a sudden, you know, stop eating well and stop exercising. But your body needs to be a little bit more regulated. And, you know, comparing it to something like that was like, oh, this makes sense. Like there's just an imbalance in my body and like, that's okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And it has helped with that. So I am becoming more open and vulnerable and sharing about that, even though sometimes it is challenging. Cause like you said, I feel like people think like you're crazy and it's like, but you know, my anxiety is also what has helped me to be I don't know, as successful as I am, right? <laughs> like, I think, you know, for my age, I'm doing okay. Like, I'm, I'm happy, right? Isn't that what, you know, success is, I guess, you know, I guess it's different for everybody. But for me, is like, for the most part, like, I'm genuinely happy with the life that I'm living. Like, I enjoy the things that I'm doing. I have good people in my life. I'm healthy. Like, it, it doesn't really get that much better than that. Um, so, yeah, it's all good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah, exactly. That's the message, man. I feel like, well, when I turned down medication for the first 100 times, it was because I didn't, because <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, I don't want to get addicted. I think yeah. that's a big fear. Yeah, which is possible. And you have to be careful. And, mm-hmm. um, but that's also like why you go to a doctor and they like start you on a lower dosage and then, they, you know, they should slowly increase the progression of that. And, have conversations about like which kind to go on and like your history and what might be best for you and why it might be best for you. And like, don't be afraid to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what I would say is like, you know, educate yourself a little bit about what it is you're putting into your body still so that you have an understanding of like the potential side effects. Cause I was fortunate where the first one that I went on worked Um, But I have other friends who literally have tried like every single one and had some of the most horrible side effects and like it made things a lot worse. Um, And what works again, just like with self care and stuff, what works for one person's body isn't necessarily going to work for somebody else's. So just because, you know, I don't know what kind you're on, but it's not necessarily going to be the same. Yeah. Um, So you got to figure out what's what's best for you. Yeah, that first one did not work for me at all Mm -hmm. like that that's why it's important again to open up about you know if you take it if you don't because then people will first of all yes get research get a slightly educated because what I did I heard the first word I was like I'm taking it and I didn't look into it at all and that bit me in the ass but like if you know when people share it and they go hey this one worked for me or listen it took me like five different tries to get one that did work then the 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 journey becomes a little less confusing because when I got on that first one, no one told me that, you know, it might not work. I just assumed that, you know, I'd take a happy pill and I'd be cured. So I took these pills and like it, my brain was not good on them. Like it felt like I, I remember it felt like my brain had flatlined because I had no emotion or reaction to anything. And I just looked really sick and people were like, I would swim and I'd have to get out because um, like my body would go numb because my heart was beating so fast. And like, they'd have to carry me out of the pool. And people were like, you got to talk to your doctor about that. And I was like, no, no, no. Yeah. But tr- she, she prescribed them to me. So they have to work. Right. But that's not the case for everybody. Yeah. Well, and I think what you had said, like just thinking that it's some happy pill is like, it's not like you go on it and now all of a sudden you're like happy all the time either. Mm -hmm. Like you still have up days, you still have down days. It just helps to regulate you. And honestly, like I, I was learning a little bit more about acceptance and commitment therapy and, 
you know, and learning a little bit more about that. It's also like happy is not like a baseline state. You know what I mean? Of emotion is like, it's perfectly normal to have good days and bad days in your life. And like to, to think that you can consistently be happy every single day is just, it's just, it just is not, (laughs) it's not a thing, right? Yeah, you can't, you'd get so tired. I'm telling you. (laughs) Imagine that energy where you're like the happiest ever all day, every day. No, thank you. I'd rather be sad. I mean, I can't say that. (laughs) I'd rather have both. That's what I meant. But yeah, that, um, (laughs) well, it's funny when you talk about like energy levels, often say, Leah, you're either like super energetic or you're asleep. (laughs) Like those are your two states. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Yeah. It's it's, it's true though. Um, yeah, to your point again, like the, like the therapist, what my therapist told me that comforted me was because I was like, I don't want to go on them. I don't want to be dependent on a pill. She was like, listen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it cures everything. When you take medication, it's like maximum 20%. Well, again, for some people it's not, but for people in my situation, my, me personally, she said medication was 20 is 20% of your recovery. It's not a hundred, 80% comes from other things. So just think of it as like a little addition as opposed yeah. to something to be dependent on. And that made it a lot less scary. Yeah.